You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market. From unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Fanasi from OptionFit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionFit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. And now, get ready to hit the option block. All right, everybody, that little bit of tunage means it is time to rock out once again with everyone's favorite. I hope it's your favorite. It is certainly mine, although I may be a wee bit biased. Yes, it is time for the option block. My name is Mark Longo coming at you live from or live. Yeah, live and actually live to tape as well. We're doing both there today. Managed to make it all happen here on the old options insider radio network. I sound a little bit different because I am once again on the road. No West rest for the wicked here on the old Option Block program. But the show is still coming at you and coming at you live, so you get to enjoy it however you like to again this week. And joining me on the old program today, we got a veritable cadre of characters. Let's start out. Let's go out. Let's see. Where should we start? Let's spin that old wheel. Okay, here we go. First off, it is the sleepy, the tranquil Hamlet, known as St. Charles, where we are joined once again by the maestro, the major D over there, major D over there, at Skippy's Euros and Lemonade. Also, he has a little bit of a moonlighting gig he does at stcharleswealth.com. He is Uncle Mike Tusa. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show. How goes your Mater D gig? <laughs> Always happy to be a Mater D. I've never, uh, never really been called that before. So I have to say, when I woke up this morning, I did not say to myself, I'm probably going to be uh, thought of as a Mater D this morning or today. So. See? Always, always create, always creativity on this show. I never know what I'm walking into in the introduction. I love it. You never know what you're going to get. And you also never go know what you're going to get when you toss it way out there to the hinterlands, to the far, far reaches of these here continental United States listeners. We almost are out, almost out, not quite, right to the very edge in a little space called Maine where we are joined by the man who likes crickets and clams and scratchy noises, he is the rock lobster himself. Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Line Capital. Mr. G, how go things, sir? Uh, they, go, they go well. I, I did send you photographic evidence of the thievery, the clam thievery that goes on in Maine. But uh, uh, things are okay. 
just waiting for Friday because now apparently the market has to wait until the big meet. But we can talk about that later. Ah, yes, the skullduggery continues behind the scenes. You thought, I may have thought as well, listeners, you thought that the skullduggery was over, that the clam pirates had retreated, but nay, they have returned. So the Rock Lobster, if you hear some shotguns and some swearing in a main accent in the background during the show, <laughs> you'll know you'll know why what's going on over there. And last but certainly not least, I don't think he's dealing with any clam piracy. He's just got a lot of other things cooking in his neck of the woods. He is the last dad of Krypton, Mr. Trey Jarrell, holding down the Fidelity hot seat there today. Mr. Trey, welcome back to the program. A lot going on in your neck of the woods these days, wouldn't you say? Uh, very busy day, very exciting day for us uh, here at uh, Fidelity. Uh, definitely no clams uh, being so, uh, stolen uh, in our neck of the woods, though. Maybe let's hit it right off the top before we even get into the the trading block obviously like i was mentioning some listeners may not have seen it yet big day for you guys you guys jumping into the zero commission fray why don't you break it down for us really quickly obviously stocks are in there what else is in there are options in there as well uh yeah they are so basically the breakdown stocks and etfs uh, all zero commission uh here for you now at, uh, at fidelity uh for option trades uh we've gotten rid of the uh, the base rate so it was uh 495 plus 65 cents a contract so we've done away with the 495. You do have the 65 cent uh, per contract still on there. Uh, you know, one of the things that I always uh, like to, to point our option traders to, uh, you know, that little, uh, especially for those option income sellers, when you buy those trades back to close, uh, usually a little discount. We've changed that now 65 cents or less uh, buying back an option uh, to close is going to be uh, commission waived there as well. So. Um, definitely a very exciting uh, day here for us, and um, uh, I've had a lot of uh, great uh, comments and, and calls on it here so far today. Well, you know, they heard us discussing it on the last show, the higher-ups, and I think they realized once we were fans here on the option block, they had no choice, right? They had to proceed. <laughs> exactly. All right, and we have to proceed right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Let's get to it. A little bit of what's trading here in the old, in the old markets. It's a bit of a weird week, as the Rock Lobster kind of alluded to. We are kind of in, in wait-and-see mode these days. Everyone waiting to see what the, the next shoe is to drop in trade war land will there be more exacerbations will we try to delist more names will there be detente everyone shaking hands who knows i guess we'll find out tomorrow in the meantime though the market's having a bit of a joyous waiting period <laughs> rally ho mode yet again today not quite the full up one and a half two percent days we've seen of late but still fairly aggressively to the upside most of the major indices in fact all of them up over half a percent S&P actually leading the charge today, a rear day where the S&P leading the dance up coming into showtime here right around almost almost 0.7 percent, about 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 two thirds or so. And uh, let's see the Dow and the Nasdaq both kind of tied around 0.55 or so percentage wise. Also seeing gold taking a bit of a dip. No surprise there as markets rally gold tends to dip usually not all the time, but usually and oil actually getting a little bit of a lift, too. If you like oil. And you like the rock lobster, stay tuned in about, oh, about an hour or so, hour and a half. <laughs> we'll be chatting more. So all sorts of commodity fun uh, with myself and the rock lobster. Who knows? Maybe some others will join the party. It'll be fun. So if you like all that stuff, with all the stuff we do here, but breaking it down, the commodity options side and futures options side, all that good stuff, Twifo is your bag. You can listen to it live after this show or, of course, wherever you find this fine podcast program. Just sit next, and it'll be right there waiting for you. And, of course, our old friend Vix is also also waiting for us here, waiting waiting for the market, really, I guess, because it's, it's taken a bit of a break. It had a nice little rally earlier in the week. It got up to over the 20 handle again. So I guess I guess our friend Brian <laughs> from OPR, he, he probably I tried to write to me again and say, hey, I won this week because he, he did have that, that 20 handle pick from a couple of weeks ago in the crystal ball. Uh, so we ever so briefly flirted with 20 to the upside, got up to about 20, 30 or so. On Wednesday, actually Tuesday, and then it uh, looks like it never, oh no, I'm sorry, Wednesday, it was Wednesday, and then it kind of shot right back down to where we are right now, 18, that's still up a point from last show, but nowhere near as high as it could have been a few days ago, and looking out over here to our old friend VVIX, as you might imagine, it goes up, it goes down, the VIX does anyway, that means VVIX is elevated yet again at that 
at that very critical triple digit level of 100 right now, that, that demarcation level. And then you got to start paying attention. Uh, VXX coming up a little bit, actually up about half a handle. It hit a high of nearly 27 this week. So everyone who was betting on hardcore erosion, we know from ball views and looking at the OI out there that a lot of you have been of late, very near term too, September, October, kind of heartbreaking paper. Not getting that this week. Threatened 27, now it's at about 24 and a half. That puts it up about half a handle from where we were on our last program. And since I, I invoked him and roundly mocked him a little bit, I guess we'll start with the Rock Lobster, sir. First off, Mr. Rock Lobster, how excited are you to be doing a little Twifo action in a little bit? But before we even get there, what's on your, what's on your radar for this show, sir? I am excited about Twifo because there's a lot of action. I mean, all the action is gold. Bond futures, gold futures, oil futures. So there's, there's like, this is macro land. The, uh, the uh, Viceroy would be happy. I said the uh, Viceroy the is giddy as we speak. <laughs> Wherever he giddy. is right now, he's a giddy fellow. He is, because macro, macro, macro. Uh, the equity market basically is uh, hurrying to, was it, waiting for Guffman? Was that one of those uh, funny movies <laughs> some time ago? Uh, what I would say is... Um, the vol market is waiting for a trade deal. Trump now supposedly is going to go personally to talk to the Chinese delegation. You know, <laughs> I guess, you know, uh, all I could say is it's not going to surprise me if there's a big photo op and a news conference and a press conference that there has been some sort of because I don't think, you know, uh, now like everybody's kind of looking at the Chinese a little harder than they did last year. The U.S., a lot of uncertainty, kind of hurting growth. Uh, nobody's really winning uh, the trade war uh, for sure. So maybe some kind of detente and uh, they keep moving forward. I, it's not going to surprise me um, if it happens. Let's put it that way. So what happens to VIX, VXX? Uh, that's a good question. I'm, you know, if, if it's kind of a big fail, the market is going to be sad for the short term for sure. Maybe, what do we get down? Twenty, fifty, something like that. Um, you know, the general. Oh God, we got to slug through this for another six months or something. So that definitely will not be a market positive. I think vol would subside eventually. Um, if we do have some kind of partial trade deal, um, I think the market will rock it because the algos will love it, and basically nobody will sell, so the market will go straight up. Uh, and volatility will come in eventually. Uh, so I'm looking like till next week. Uh, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, after some of the dust is cleared. Who knows about Monday, depending on the type of move. Um, so you could see, like, VIX, my prediction, 15 or 25. How about that for Wednesday? Could be either one um, quite easily, as a matter of fact. So if this, because it's all been trade deal, I think uh, volatility is all trade deal. 100 VIX is usually a big move in store. So, or 100 VIX. So, I think that's what we're sitting on waiting. And right now, like, again, we'll get to this probably in the TWIFO show, but, you know, treasury bonds or, you know, uh, treasuries are uh, prices are down and yields are up, which is, you know, I think people are trying to get ahead of the news possibly for this weekend. Like pe the market could be, again, once again, sniffing for a deal that doesn't happen because it's happened so many times. But the, the signs are pointing to something getting done, at least with uh, yields going up again. So. I think that's where we are. That's where VIX is. Full disclosure, I'm pretty much, you know, I'm looking for 25 or 15 next week. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it right there. You're buying yourself a little bit of a little bit of movement out there in the ball bit. space. Sorry, sir. Yep. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so that should be interesting. So you heard him. He's already going out on a limb with an early crystal ball prediction listeners of 15 or 25. He has an interesting range. He's saying we got to go somewhere, just not here, uh, which is – which is intriguing. Let's see if it's equally intriguing over there in the land of Fidelity. Things are lighting it up. Things are getting cheaper. <laughs> Mr. Trey, are people taking advantage of these low commissions? Are they trading it up? What's what's going on on the Fidelity platform? Of course, yeah. It's hard to hard to pass that up, right? A zero dollar trade is going to take advantage of it. So, kind of an interesting day on our orders by Fidelity customers uh, here too. Kind of all over the place. Have a, a few names that uh, don't usually pop up. Uh, you know, here today. First one, uh, you know, coming in at number one on the list, one that uh, uh, is frequently here um, in the uh, the top 10, at least last uh, few weeks was uh, was Roku. 
Uh, coming up here again, Fidelity customers, uh, you know, definitely on the buy side here today. Got about 60% buys right now to 40% uh, sells. You know, Roku had a big jump this morning at some positive uh, analyst uh, remarks uh, here earlier, but actually pulling back a little bit now, down uh, about a dollar eighty uh, here at uh, one sixteen uh, eleven. Uh, chart's been interesting uh, here on this one, right after the big sell-off from one seventy. Looks like it, uh, you know, finally caught that base at one hundred and started to. Uh, you know, see some uh, upward movement. We'll see where the uh, the rest of the day brings. Looked like it was going to continue that, uh, you know, upward trend here today, but, uh, you know, did pull back since then. But, you know, option market, uh, certainly interesting in Roku too. You see, you know, really the uh, the heavy uh, volume on the uh, the call side here, about 117,000 calls to uh, about 59,000 uh, puts here right now. So, you know, certainly seeing uh, some call love here. The uh, action, though, a little bit uh, heavier on the sell side than the buy side of the uh, the calls uh, here today. So, um, you know, that one uh, certainly one that's popped up uh, here a few times before. A uh, couple other ones on the list here that uh, aren't out there too often. Uh, today we see Bed Bath & Beyond, BBBY, coming up here. Fidelity customers uh, trading that as well. Also on the, the buy side here, uh, from the Fidelity customer standpoint, got about 55% uh, of orders on the, uh, the buy side. Uh, so taking a look at the the stocks, this was an interesting one, right? It's uh, you know been trending down uh, here since uh, since April, hit a low of just over seven dollars, but since then, kind of recouping uh, here today. But big upward move uh, today, just shy of twenty uh, percent uh, here to where it's trading at eleven dollars and eighty three cents. They'd announced they're bringing in a uh, new CEO uh, here was. Um, uh, one of the uh, marketing uh, executives from Target. So, uh, you know, market uh, certainly liking that uh, news here. Fidelity customers positive on it here on the other uh, buy side. Uh, you know, option market, uh, maybe a little bit uh, more split uh, here as well. Just uh, about 50-50 on calls and puts here right now, about 49,000 calls to 51,000 uh, puts traded uh, here on the day. You know, 90-day average volume, that's only 27,000. is just under 100,000 uh, here right now. So, you know, big uh, options volume uh, in here today compared to, uh, you know, compared to its uh, average there. Um, the other one uh, here today, again, one that's not uh, usually uh, on our list, popping into the top 10, was uh, PCG, uh, Pacific Gas and Electric. Uh, Fidelity customers on the buy side here too, about 78% buys to 22% sells right now. Uh, the stock is down just under 30% uh, right now, trading at $7.85. A lot going on in the news with uh, with PCG. Last couple of days have been announcing some uh, various large power shutdowns uh, here across the uh, the state of uh, California. Um, but uh, you know, certainly interesting our reaction with Fidelity customers coming in on the uh, the buy side here, option market right leaning heavy towards the uh, the call side as well, seventy seven thousand uh, calls right now versus forty one thousand puts, and you know the stock is you know certainly had uh, quite a bit of trouble uh, you know here from that charting standpoint uh, here over the uh, the. Uh, last uh, few months or last uh, year here, really, uh, not quite at the year lows, right? It actually dipped uh, lower uh, here in January, right, to about $6. So uh, near that level uh, here right now. Um, and this is a sector, right? This is a utility stock. Uh, ut utilities sector has been you know, really performing fairly well, right? A, a leader uh, here in the S&P over the one and three months. So, you know, you're uh, a stock that's uh, in a sector that's doing well, but unfortunately a stock that's, uh, you know, really been underperforming. But, uh, you know, at least for today, even with the sell-off uh, options uh, market kind of leaning towards that call side, Fidelity customers leaning towards that uh, buy side. So a little bit of a different uh, take here from uh, what they were looking at. Uh, last one I wanted to uh, to mention here, uh, Last Semper, I know talked about this briefly on, uh, on Monday here, a uh, stock that he was paying attention to, coming into uh, earnings, uh, which was uh, Delta uh, Airlines here. So uh, earnings uh, did come out uh, here this morning. Uh, they did beat their earnings per share uh, number here, the consensus, missed on uh, the revenue uh, uh, consensus target. Stock down uh, here right now, down $1.26 at uh, 52.65. Uh, Fidelity customers on the buy side. So kind of the theme today on the buy side on uh, you know everything, whether it's up uh, or down. Uh, 72 percent buys to uh, to 28 uh, percent uh, sells uh, here as well. Uh, you know, charting uh, standpoint here on this one, uh, you know, kind of took a, a dip. It's very interesting. Had the same type of a drop uh, back here in April through Drew June, where it bottomed out right around this uh, 50 dollars and 50 cents to 51 cent uh, range, right where it's hitting at today. So kind of an interesting level I'd pay attention to if it does manage to get some traction. Did drop lower and has pulled up a little bit uh, since then. 
Um, but, you know, still below that 200-day moving average, which is right about the $55 standpoint. But on the option side, uh, heavy on the calls uh, here today as well, 65,000 uh, calls to 32,000 uh, puts here. Uh, again, just under 100,000 uh, options uh, traded uh, here today. This is uh, on a name that usually does about 20. 2,000 90-day average uh, volume, so seeing some heavy uh, action in there today. But uh, those were uh, the ones that uh, popped up uh, here in the uh, few interesting ones in the top 10. I mentioned a lot of names here that uh, don't usually pop up, but it uh, seems like Fidelity customers kind of busy today uh, taking advantage of those, uh, those $0 trades. But that's what, uh, that's what I had on uh, our radar today. Yeah, taking advantage of them there, zero commissions and, you know, no ticket charge there on the options side of the fence. Uncle Mike, sir, what are you doing to celebrate this this grand, fine, zero commissions day? How are you celebrating at St. Charles Wealth Management? Maybe you're doing some crazy iron condor swaps, something multi-leg, some multi-leg fun? I, sh- I should go start doing that, just actually go out there and just trade just for the heck of it, right? That, that That's sound and prudent. Um, no, I think that... Uh, Andrew really hit the nail on the head in terms of this being a very uh, macro-driven market. I think if you watch the futures trades yesterday, it was actually really interesting right around dinner time uh, or a little after dinner when all of a sudden the S&P futures dropped like about 30 points or so uh, almost instantly when there was uh, an announcement that um, – they didn't think there was going to be a trade deal and that uh, just it just wasn't going to happen. And then uh, a couple of hours later, they said, oh, no, that was uh, fake news. Uh, it didn't really happen. It looks like there is going to be a trade deal. And then uh, most of the market went went on and recovered. So I think that uh, the market is very sensitive right now to uh, what's going to happen uh, with, with the trade talks at this point in time. Uh, the one thing, the only thing that I could see that uh, – uh, would not put us at the 15 or the 25 level in VIX is what Andrew said. The only thing I could see stopping that, honestly, is if they decided to punt and say, oh, we're going to hold off till later and then uh, do that. So, but other than that, I think that uh, all eyes right now are on uh, seeing what, what's going to happen with this trade deal. Let's see where the market's eyes are turned now that a lot of people have access to very low commissions out here. Let's see how that's, how that's changing things up. A little bit here. Let's look at the indices first coming into a little bit towards the latter portion here of the trading block. And looks like Vic's actually doing some decent paper, a little bit north of half of its ADV. The ADV a little bit, it's right around half a million contracts. ADV about, or excuse me, today's volume at about 260,000 contracts. Spy at about one and a half million. It's ADV about three and a quarter million. So almost at the ADV there as well. SPX pushing 650. Uh, the ADV about 1.4 million out there. The Qs at about 390. The ADV out there a little bit shy of 700 thousand. And the Russell, aka IWM, not the Rut, but IWM at about 165 with the ADV at about 530 thousand. Let's go out to the individual names, and see what's lighting it up out there. We've got another day at least where it takes 100 k, 100 k to break into the top 10. That's a good barometer for at least a decently active day. We have a lot of days lately where we're seeing 80, 90,000 makes it into the top 10. And that's just, that's just not the way it's supposed to be listeners. But today, nice, nice, nice 108 gets you into the top 10. These numbers as of a few minutes ago. So pretty, uh, pretty updated stuff here. Baba at the number 10 spot, 108,000. Number two, Mike, excuse me, number nine, Microsoft at 116,000. Number eight, PCG. Buck 19 on the tape. Number seven, Netflix doing, let's see, 132,000 contracts. Number six, Tesla, 143,000. Number five, Bank of America, 151. Number four, AMD, a perennial top tenor these days, sometimes a top three-er. Uh, today at number four, 160,000 contracts. Number three, ABBV, our old friend. I think it's been on the odd block, not not a little while ago, not too, not too recently. Uh, 170,000. Number two, Roku, a buck 77. And number one, you know it, you love it. It's Apple just dominating the tape today. 414,000 contracts uh, on the tape there. So uh, hot stuff there in Apple land. And let's see, let's see if we've got any hot stuff of our own as we keep on rolling right on into the eye block. 
It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. time it is listeners it's time to get weird it is time to get wild it is time for the odd block let's kick it off here let's see we like doing some some live scoops here see what our eye of sauron is kicking us today first off what do we got we've got everyone's favorite pro petro holding <laughs> ticker symbol pump p-u-m-p i like it you know i'm a fan of an appropriate ticker and pump <laughs> certainly falls into that category. Let's see. This is the name that today is uh, trading. Oh, pretty good day for them today. They're trading 944, up about a buck and a half or nearly 20% on the day. So rally ho mode here <laughs> for for pump. Uh, let's see. Over the past year, it's had an interesting little saga here. A year ago, it was trading nearly 18 bucks, 1780. And then it rallied up to nearly 19 in November. And then it sold off like pretty much everything else right around Christmas Eve down to 1213. Then it turned right back around, had a nice run up to 24. So it pretty much doubled over the, uh, that was in April, mid April. And then it kind of turned right back around again. And by August, it was trading 11 and a half. 52 week low on this name came actually very recently of uh, 777. And here we are today now, of course, at 944. So bouncing off, bouncing up, I should say from that uh, low end of the range. So a crazy, crazy year here for Perpetro Holding Corp. Let's see what we've got lighting up our eye of Sauron. Oh, I think you're going to like this one, Mr. Rock Lobster. This seems like it's an up your alley kind of trade. We got the Deese seven half puts. So these were, <laughs> these were at the money until about a day ago, until today, really. So now a day ago, these were at the money puts. Now, not so much. Now a wee bit out of the money. Looks like someone deciding he likes that level. And he wants to draw the line in the sand right there to the tune of 10,000 of these D7 half puts going up for 45 cents. That's pretty much a nickel off the bid. Uh, these are opening for our friends over there on the Philly. Uh, let's see. So Mr. Rock Lobster, I don't know. We got a stock that's uh, had a bit of a tumult. But this guy is right in these puts pretty much at the 52-week low. The stock has rallied off of it. Maybe I guess you could say the other way around. If he had, if he had gotten these off, <laughs> let's say, uh, a day or so ago, he could have got a little bit more juice for those puts. But uh, maybe, maybe his outlook has changed given today's news. What do you think about these clearly line-in-the-sand puts in pump? You know, how, how, what is the, what's the track record of our line-in-the-sand people? Since we started highlighting the line of the sand puts, you know that's a good overall. Question. I would say we we, we break on we break we review a lot of them, but I don't specifically have the metrics for the line in the sand versus the guys who buy calls versus the guys who do all sorts of other crazy stuff, right? I mean, I'm I'm just going to say in general, which of course this is a big generalization. Um, um, wow, actually, an oil field services company's rallying. <laughs> when was the last time we saw that? I think XOPs at you know multi year lows. Um, these guys have been pretty, oh, I don't know if they're guys. We, we got to watch those gender pronouns. So these people, whoever are selling the, the people, uh, um, line of the sand people, <laughs> they're like, remind me of star Wars line of the, like the sand people in star Wars. These like are line that. of the sand. I like people. that. Do they roar like the sand people in star Wars? Oh, I'm going to sell these puts. Um, <laughs> I hope I hope that happens somewhere on a desk. Someone just makes that noise. And they trade. That would make my <laughs> your whole your whole concept just changed. Now we have we have the line of the sand people <laughs> from Star Wars, and I know you're a big fan of that uh, that joke. So I, I threw you a little ball there. About. I have no uh, I have no reference for that license whatsoever. You have no... so I they have usually um, they have done well as far as I can tell. Um, so. Now, clearly, yesterday would have been a much better day, but maybe they're selling these because they're 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 sensing the uh, the free money and the five percent return on risk to uh, December, which you know probably will do better than the market overall if they can collect that. So, um, what's, this is the classic though: the stock is up, 
a dollar and a half. They sell 10,000 puts for 45 cents and they go out 50 cent bid. Yep, that's, <laughs> that's, just, just, that's just old school. How are they now? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I should old not, school uh, screwage. <laughs> <laughs> Can I cancel that first that first uh, lot there? You know, we don't that wasn't that was we're just warming up, right? <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, <laughs> it's because, you know, what happened in the old days, like market makers would get shut out of the print. So they're like, OK, you shut me out of the print. Screw you, broker. So they're going to bid them a nickel after they sell them. Uh, very. That's what we call angry trading. And I would just I would caution all the listeners to not trade angry. I'll just say that. I'll leave it there. I will leave it there, mister. Mr. Long. Well, we all learned from Groundhog Day we can't drive angry, and now we've learned we can't trade angry as well. So the wisdom continues to spread here. On to the flow, options. to flow. Yes. <laughs> on the options inside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I haven't looked at the news. What's driving this particular name up? I, I mean, in terms of line in the sands names we've seen, this one doesn't offend me. Fifty-two week low, a decent level. Obviously, you could have got more for him a day or so ago, but hey, I'm sure the narrative has changed markedly. The stock's up twenty percent, so he probably has a much, much more confident perhaps in that level now than he was perhaps a day ago. Uh, so interesting stuff. I think we're going to put those. Tell you what, Mr. Rock Lobster, we'll do it. We'll put those in the to be watched category, and we shall return to these lines. So we could we could answer your question of how well these line in the sand, at least this specific trade, how well they fare. We shall return, listeners. So mark that in your calendars as we keep on rolling into our next name. What do we got here? Uh, let's see. It was oh, our old friend Delta Airlines. Ticker symbol Dal. D A L. Trading today, 52.64, off about a one and a quarter, or about 2.4, almost 2.5%. And this is the name that a year ago was trading pretty much close to where it is right now, right around 50 bucks, 49 and change. And then it shot up in, let's see, December to about 60. And then, of course, in the, the great nadir of late December, early January, got down to pretty much its 52-week low of 45, 45.08. Then it kind of turned back around by April. It was trading 57 again. And then by, let's see, July, it was trading 62, which is close to its pretty much 52-week high, about 63 and a half, right around that July time frame. Since then, it's kind of sold off from that peak and got down to where it is right now, 52, 64 again. So not quite the 52-week low, not quite the high, kind of right in the middle, the Goldilocks level of the 52-week range. Let's see what we got lighting up our table. This was kind of a twofer. What first came across our radar was a was a 5,000 lot of the no double calls, AK-55. Some people have asked, what is double? Double is just 55. It's, it's just old trader speak working its way out to the fore sometimes. He can't kill it all. Sometimes it comes back. Uh, let's see. No double calls trading 76 cents. That was lifting the offer there 5,000 times. But then we dug a little more. So that's weird. Just an open and upside lot of no double calls. And it turns out it wasn't as weird as it, as it seemed because against it looks like there was actually – an old school vertical to the tune of 48 cents paper also coming in and selling out the no 57 half call. So a nice two and a half buck vertical for about 48 cents on this bad boy. This is opening, at least opening on the no doubles, uh, not so much on the 57 half. So I guess it could be rolling down. Mr. Rock Lobster, while you're busy typing away there, what is uh, what is your spidey sense telling you? In terms of, you think this is a roll? Think this is just a straight up opening vertical? What, what, what's your spidey sense telling you? I, I, that's what I get for trying. To, I try to do things quietly and secretly. Yet somehow, Longo figures it out. I, I know all. I see all. I, that is why it is the eye of Sauron. I under, I totally understand that now. I just thought that was all hype for the show, but now I realize it is real. I'm like Roz Monster, Monsters Inc. I'm watching. I'm always watching. <laughs> um. This is a, I, I would just say on this one, I'm a, um, I don't know. I don't know on this one. This is a little bit of a, um, I see buying the double calls, got all that stuff. Um, and I, I thought Delta was just, yeah, that confirmed its earnings before market open. So they are, are they taking their money and they rolling de- like, so here's the thing with this. Did they roll down because the stock is down on the day? Is, could that be possible? You know, maybe they're like, okay, we're going we're gonna to jump into these. Um, you know, we had some open interest on the no 57 and a half. They disappointed us massively, so we're going to close them and um, buy some of the, set, the no 55s, um, thinking that 
they're still going to try to you know get a pop out of this thing. Um, or the other thing where you could turn it kind of on its head is maybe they sold the 57 and a halfs uh, and they collapsed because the pricing is a little funky on this. It's hard to tell right from the because uh, everything kind of traded on the offer offer side. Uh, so it would make sense to me if somebody had written the 57 and a halfs, they're taking they're closing them for 28 cents and now they're writing the 55s because the stock is down and they want to grab the extra juice. That's normally you know, what we would have seen like on the floor, like uh, somebody had that right on and now they just want the extra juice. The earnings are out and the stock's not going to go up. So they'll just go for the extra juice. That's what I would think. Or you would have uh, door number two where the customer is smoking hopium and <laughs> their 57 and a half calls aren't going to make them any money. So they're going to roll down, spend more money and hope the stock goes up when clearly it does not want to. So, Trade number two, door number two is the hopium trade, and door number one, I would say, would be the savvy call writer trade. There you go. The savvy call writer trade. Yeah, because yeah, either way, yeah, two and a half dollar spread doesn't excite me too much. Rolling down in the same month, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that. It could, it could be done. I'm not averse to it all the time, but it's not my favorite trade. I usually, if you're going to roll, give yourself a little bit more time to play, right? But uh, say lobby, I, I could see all different ways for this. What do you guys think, listeners? I'm curious to know what you guys think as we move on into. Our final name here, this is ECA, <laughs> e- ticker symbol ECA. Uh, this is in Canacorp. This is a nat gas company, or as they say on their company profile, they're engaged in hydrocarbon exploration. <laughs> I like that. Uh, trading today, $4.18, up about a penny. So pretty much unched on the day. But that's not the case for the year. Oh, no siree. You know, Nat Gas has moved over the past year, and this name has kind of uh, kind of moved as well. A year ago, was trading about three x, about twelve bucks, actually twelve and a half bucks. So a, f- a wee bit farther north than it is right now, and then it pretty much sold off precipitously by the time we got to the Nader, or at least for that time, was five and eleven. That was down on Christmas Eve yet again. So it sold off pretty hard from October to December. Pretty much went from twelve and a half bucks down to five bucks, so just got its wings clipped pretty aggressively. Then it hung out in that five to seven dollar range until about May or so, when the warm seemed like it turned again, and then uh, took a beating down to four and a half, and then it kind of slowed down to its fifty-two week low down around three ninety or so. That came looks like it came around August, or actually could they could have touched it again recently because they've since have sold off again down to this level. They briefly spiked. Back in early September, back up to five and a half, but that was very short lived and right back down to where we are right now. Four bucks and change. So let's see what our Eye of Sauron picked up here. Oh, this is kind of a weird one, Mr. Rock Lobster, because our Eye of Sauron, it likes to look for, you know, prints and interesting prints and blocks and things as well as other fun things. And it, it spits out these no four calls going up 3,508 times for 50 cents when the market was 50 cents at 55. So you look at it, and you think, oh, that's an interesting. That's an overwrite, uh, maybe for thirty five hundred times opening on the Philly. But you know something just something just didn't ring true about that. So we we dug a little bit deeper. This is one of the things I like about about the Flowmasters platform. If you type in some names, they'll tell you how these things actually went up, and a total actually of twenty seven thousand lighting up the tape today. And he'll break he'll, they break it down by where they went up on the spectrum of execution, which is kind of nice. So of that twenty seven thousand, obviously that's a lot. 55% actually going up on the offer. So lifting the offer over there, Mr. Rock Lobster. That, that tells a little bit of a different tale. That actually seems like someone, instead of looking to grab a little bit of yield between now and November, is actually looking to uh, get the upside ball rolling 27,000 times. <laughs> uh, so obviously there's a lot of funkiness going in. Obviously they're probably working some orders, so that's going to mess with the execution metrics a little bit. They got a print lifting in there, and people are hitting it and working around it because you're not going to get 27 off in one clip. Doesn't sound like this fellow did here either, but still interesting stuff. So uh, you can parse this a bunch of different ways. Mr. Rock Lobster, what is your spidey sense? What's it telling you? You think you're going to go with that majority buying, make you think that this guy is, uh, is, is swinging for the fences here in ECA? Or do you think it's more like he's looking to grab a little bit of ye old yield between now and November? A very, this is like, this is a class. I think we would used to call these, cage match options where there's one size guy on one side and then there's a size person on the other and they're like, they're duking it out. 
in the cage to see what wins. Um, and normally, uh, something like this, I would say the seller is a buy rider. That's just pension fund type buy ride activity. Um, the yield on this is absurd. It's uh, 50 cents on a $4 yeah, it's stock. Pretty juicy. It's pretty juicy. It's like, it's, it's uh, what, 38 cents, 32 cents over parity. So it's not 10%, but let's call it 8%. Um, stock at the bottom. They actually pay a dividend. So it's like somehow it's a net gas company that makes money when net gas is $2.25 a BTU or something. Um, very, very interesting trade. Uh, I, I, this is like, I just, I think this is a writer. Just the yield is too big. My big question is why is the ball so fat? Um, so as, as you know, when you put your trader hat on you put your uh, sleuthing hat on, um, Mr. Longo, you're like, you know, why is Nat gas juice stock? Like it's pretty much a dead industry right now, as far as I can tell, um, if you want to look at stocks that haven't done anything, look at like Exxon and any producer XOP like this year has just been a zero year for them. Um, maybe it's the bottom for net gas prices. I don't know. Um, but anyway, like the rider would make money. Uh, the yield is pretty big, but you know, a fairly good chunk of juice earnings come out and looks, I think they're like the late October cycle. There's a lot of questions in this one. Uh, to be honest, a lot of questions. Um, on what they actually do, what they actually make. Um, a real, it's an actual awful lot of volatility for, you know, a known, meaning like net gas prices are really low. I can't see any earnings expectations to be that good. Yet somebody's willing to pay 50 cents for the no four calls. So um, it's just a very, it's an odd trade. Like the buyer, whoever is buying it, it, it seems out of category as uh it doesn't mean they can't make money, but they f it feels like they're paying a hell of a lot for that option, to be honest. Yeah, they're swinging for the fences on that one. Good thing the buy story is not here for this one because he would be deeply offended, I think, by that. <laughs> His hat would turn red. <laughs> paying, paying, <laughs> paying more than 10% of the value of the stock for a, a swing at the bat from now to November. That would deeply, deeply offend him here. But you know what that means, Mr. Rocklops? That means we got to put another one in the 2B watch category. A lot, yep. a lot of I think watch. this is worth watching. A lot of watch. Yeah, that's that's so rich that I, I could easily see why someone would want to harvest it. I, I, the way I, I like this playing out in my mind is some size underlying holder to saying, hey, you're going to pay me how much from now to November? Done. I'm out. Uh, you know, and, and hitting that bid all day long. But you're right. Someone's got to be gobbling these up, whether it's the desk uh, taking the other side to be nice to this guy. <laughs> I mean, that gas has been moving. We will get to that in Twifo in a little bit, listeners. Uh, so maybe there are some secrets to be unlocked there. But we shall see. As we put that one also, two out of three in the to be watched category. An interesting week, Mr. Rocklap. So let's see if your listener mail, if it can keep up the goodies as we keep on rolling right on into the mail block. Now it's time to empty the mailbag and see what our listeners have to say. It's the mail block. All right. Welcome to the mail block, listener. This is where you guys take the reins, your questions, your comments. We usually kick it off every week seeing what's cooking in the in the fidelity client's brain with your question of the week but i got i gotta imagine this week trey that the the actual fidelity question is pretty much what i just asked you at the top of the show i gotta imagine 90 percent of the calls that are coming into the active trader strategy desk are like hey walk me through this commission thing how does it work how does it work for options would you say that that's the lion's share of the questions you're getting today sir uh, it, it has been, yeah, you know, up until today, uh, this week was, uh, are you guys going to do it today? It's uh, turned around to a little bit more of a uh, detail around it, but, uh, you know, we actually did get a decent, uh, um, uh, kind of interesting option question, uh, here in one of our, uh, classrooms today though, that, uh, was outside of the realm of, uh, commissions here that, uh, we can bring up. And I thought it was kind of good timing. Uh, you know, we haven't talked to all the China news is dominating uh, here lately. Uh, I don't want to forget that we've got uh, earnings uh, on the horizon uh, here for next week. So um, the question that came in is if I want to buy an option for an earnings play, uh, should I wait until right before earnings to buy or buy now? And this is someone that may be thinking out a, a week or two. And really the thought behind this question was, uh, you know, clients looking at it, if volatility is going to be, uh, you know, increasing, right, if you're expecting an, an IV to, to continue to rise, 
you know, do I want to pay now if that option is going to be more expensive right before earnings? So I thought it was a, a, you know, a great way to think about uh, upcoming earnings. But, uh, you know, what I always remind clients for looking at option uh, pricing, right? We never want to focus on just uh, just one aspect, right? We have different uh, components uh, here as well. Um, you know, when we're thinking about that IV rising. Keep in mind, we do have uh, time decay uh, working against us uh, here as well. So IV may be rising. Uh, here, keeping that uh, you know premium fairly steady as time is uh, decaying, uh, we also have to think about potential price moves uh, here before earnings too. Uh, you know, we see a lot of names that uh, you know maybe just flatline a little bit before earnings. You may have uh, you know a week or two weeks where uh, you know price isn't doing much. It is really just waiting for that announcement. But you know that's not always the case, right? We do have a lot of stocks that uh, might move into that uh, earnings announcement. So you know, I'd say with that one, you know, you want to do a little bit of a additional analysis on it, right? If it's truly you know meant to be an earnings play, maybe you want to wait and see how uh, things uh, shake out. But if you have you know maybe some expectations on a price move uh, here before then. Uh, you definitely want to factor that uh, in uh, as well. But um, there's a couple of thoughts I had on that one, but I thought it was kind of an interesting, uh, interesting one with uh, you know earnings coming up here for us next week. Yeah, that is a very contentious issue. If anyone's intrigued by that, I know a lot of you are. I encourage you to check out all the earnings move, earnings move results reports, and the season reports we've been posting uh, from our friends over there at ORATS for some time. We have a deep catalog now at the at the optionsinsider.com. You guys can really go back and sink your teeth into a lot of data if you want on this subject to see how premium buying, premium selling, how it works out. Matt actually will break it down if premium sellers or buyers are winning the day on the on the cycle. We always say avoid earnings if possible. But Mr. Rock Lobster, that does bring up an interesting allusion to one of your favorite trades. Why don't you regale us really quickly with your, what is it, one and a half to roughly two weeks out earnings trade and then selling it right before the event? You're kind of, you're kind of free swing at the bat from a decay perspective trade, sir. See, yes. To, uh, to follow up on trade, what he said, he's like, there's multiple, there's multiple things in that trade. So in general, uh, and I don't really say always is a hard thing with options, but most of the time, and I mean high, high percentage, like 90% plus, you're going to get very reduced decay on an earnings cycle purchase. So let's say if the earnings are October 10th and you're buying the October 18 expiry options, the time two weeks before October 10th, let's say, um, your October 18s will kind of hold their value, meaning the liquidity provider is kind of doing the expected value on the earnings. Uh, that's kind of what ORATS does. They kind of give you the picture on what the, the they're expecting to the move. So it's hard for that strangle to move or the straddle to move too, to get compressed too much from decay, right? They'll just keep pumping it up, like Trey said, keep pumping the vol up until to keep that value. The thing that can happen, though, is all of a sudden the stock or the market decides to go wacky prior to earnings, which can happen. So very much like you said, Mark, it's, it is very few times you get that kind of inexpensive swing at the bat, um, you know, for a slightly bullish cycle stock, you know, has a little bit of expectations. Maybe they run it up into the earnings. So calls, buying some calls, but, you you know, you buy the earnings cycle, a little bit better opportunity to buy a options and then you just close them you know right before and then you don't have to you don't have the kind of the the 50 50 binary uh you know flip of the coin before or after the earnings cycle so it is a strategy i've liked it before a lot of like generally as a strategy s p 500 stocks that have that usually the earnings don't get super pumped um it's kind of like a free swing at some options so it is a strategy you can do if there's stocks you follow um, it's not a bad way to go. All right. I want to get this next one in here from Quent Easewood. He's been bombarding us with questions on this topic all week. He, he has an, he's a newcomer to options and he's, he's encountered some issues or perhaps some perceived issues uh, with his broker. And he, he wanted some help. I will say, by the way, Trey, you don't have to worry. This is, he's not a fidelity customer. So maybe, maybe after listening to this show, maybe you'll lure him to the dark side, sir. So it's not an issue he has with fidelity. We'll leave it unnamed at Broker X. <laughs> but uh, Quent's issue was uh, he wrote to us first, and he actually copied the support for that brokerage firm <laughs> about his issue. He said, I wish to sell my put contracts on the platform of Broker X. I said, I made a buy to open, 
and now I wish to sell to close. So, so far, so good. Sounds very reasonable. He says he made a $7.50 put buy. So I think that he meant that he means the strike price uh, on Broker X's platform expiring on October 11th. So coming up tomorrow, he says, now I want to sell said contracts, but I can't. Why is that a problem? And he, he copied us on that. So that, that sounded kind of strange. So we reached out to him for a little more clarification of exactly what, what are you looking to do? What are they telling you when you're trying to sell this? That's usually not an issue. Uh, and he sent back a, a screenshot, which is also, it, this shows why the concept of execution is sometimes so fraught uh, with peril. It, it's, it's very much, very much weighed down by your own perception of the space, what you think is a good execution. Also, your knowledge, if you're fairly new to the option space, uh, what is a good execution is a little bit different. Also, confusingly enough, he sent us a screenshot of the GE nine and a half calls, <laughs> even though he's asking about the seven and a half puts. But I assume it's a similar price scenario here because what he sent us was an option that was effectively no bid at a penny. <laughs> so these ones, it sounds like the ones that he bought uh, have effectively eroded down now to zero. And there are 1,020 contracts offered at a penny on this name. So this was an issue of you know, someone coming to this, they buy the options, they've obviously eroded, they're trying to get that last penny out of them before they go away, uh, and not understanding why that is. And obviously, well, maybe Trey, I'll let you walk them through this, because this is, you probably do this all day long, but here's an option, there's no bid for him to hit, and there's a 1,020 offered in front of him at a penny. <laughs> so maybe explain to Quent and anybody else out there why he's not immediately filled offering these at a penny. <laughs> Yeah, I guess the the simple answer is there's no one out there that's uh, you know willing to take the other side or, or buy the uh, or buy those uh, contracts. So, you know, in those scenario, right, you can always uh, you know throw an order out there, you know, wait and see if uh, if something changes in uh, you know in price. But uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's uh, you know probably uh, you know not going to work out here for you uh, on this one. Uh, likely uh, you know losing trade uh, here for you. But uh, you know you do got a day left. Certainly, price can change uh, here as well. Um, you know, I would bring up regardless of your broker too here, you know, if this is the type of, uh, you know, questions you have, um, you know, here at Fidelity, we have a whole team uh, of representatives dedicated to answer your option questions, uh, you know, here throughout the day, our active trader group and, you know, myself and Last Emperor, uh, you know, Colin uh, here host classes on this and uh, do live examples like this, looking at some of these contracts every day. So if you're always thinking about taking a step further, you want a little more education on it, uh, you know, something we uh, help out quite a bit uh, with, but you know, with this one here, just no one, uh, you know, no one out there willing to buy right now. Uh, price uh, looks like it got away from you. Not for nothing there. Uh, I almost said Trey Quint. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, if you kick the tires over there, FLE.com slash options, set up an account. They have zero commissions now, too. Not unlike the broker you appear to be using right now. And you can actually call up a guy like Trey or the last emperor, anybody else during the day with these questions and they will walk them through you. So there you go. If you're intrigued by what you're listening to, maybe you want to kick the tires over there. Uncle Mike, I have to imagine you've you've received a similar execution type call from your clients over the years. Why am I not filled on this? What's going on with this? What do you usually have to say to people who, who have these maybe misperceptions of how things work out there? Well, yeah, if there's no one there to buy it, then it's not going to get filled. Uh, so, or, so, I mean, when you do this, one, I think that uh, just to add to this conversation a little bit, oftentimes if I am doing a uh, uh, shorting a spread and I see the long leg of the, uh, of the spread, let's say it goes my way, and the long leg of the, let's say I get out of the short leg for, I don't know, a dime, 20 cents, or whatever I get out of it at, and I see the long leg is at zero by a penny, I'll just sit on it. And if you have a few weeks left to go till expiration, one thing that I've experienced with this is that maybe once every four or five years, all of a sudden some type of crazy news will come out. And then all of a sudden uh, um, I made a couple grand because of that, just sitting on it. It doesn't hurt you to have it in the account. It was just, it's kind of frustrating looking at it. Saying, oh, I got this garbage in my account. I rather wish I had more of a neat and organized screen, but you never know. I mean, it's kind of a lottery ticket type of thing. Um, I wouldn't be so concerned with it because you're not. It's, if it's a long option, it's not going to hurt you to be in your account. Uh, the only thing I would do is, let's say the underlying ex, uh, expires uh, near that area, and you don't want to be long or short the underlying, depending if it's a call or a put. Maybe give a call to your broker, just give them a do not exercise, because if it does become a penny or more in the money, it will get automatically exercised. Um, so, but aside from that, uh, sticks and stones can break my bones, but 
holding long options, uh, if they're at zero bid, can never hurt me any more than they already have. Yeah, so there you go, uh, Quint. I hope that helps. I know it's never fun to have an option you own a road down to a penny. Maybe at this point you also have to ask yourself, is it even worth trying to sell those for a penny? How many contracts do you have? Maybe 10 or 20. You know, you're talking 20 bucks. Uh, all this hassle, maybe not worth it at the end of the day versus just uh, – but this is a good learning experience for anyone out there who has these types of, of situations. And, again, not for nothing, but it looks like the broker you're using here is not exactly, shall we say, known – for for a deep bench of customer support and it sounds like you might have some questions so if that's the case maybe maybe consider uh, moving to a broker who can actually whether it's fidelity or someone else you know make sure you look at a broker who can help you with these types of scenarios we like helping you but hey we're not your broker at the end of the day uh, so we can't make them print you and so this will uh this will this is a good one good question maybe it's a good subject you know the op the topic of options education, excuse me, execution. Maybe that's maybe that's an area we need to delve in on a future episode. Might be a good topic for a boot camp one of these days as well. As we keep on rolling into our final segment, it is time to go around the block. Around the block. All right, everybody, time to go around the block, tell you what we're watching for the rest of this week into the weekend. Let's start the way we just went. Let's start with Uncle Mike, sir. What's on your radar for the rest of this week? Uncle Mike, did we lose you, sir? Sorry about that. I pulled an Andrew right oh, there. Oh, you totally pulled an Andrew. You pulled an Andrew. I, I, you know, you pulled an Andrew. <laughs> I, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, all right. Wow, now I'm all flustered. I think what I'm looking at the rest of the week is uh, just seeing if we have a trade deal. And the other thing I'm looking for is if all of a sudden we do get good news and we get a 70-point rally in the S&P, then remember, we still have that 3,000 mark. Uh, the 3,000 has been a tough nut to crack, so we're not over it yet. Uh, once we go over it, I think that, uh, of course, I'm bullish, you know me, but uh, until we get there, uh, I think that um, we need to be pretty careful in these markets. But uh, 3,000 is a key number, so 3,000, and um, watching the tweets. Watching the tweets. Everybody's always watching the tweets, the old Valfefe index. Will it spike? Will it crash? Mr. Trey, what are you watching out there, sir, in addition to the old Valfefe? Uh, yeah, so obviously uh, China here tomorrow. I think we're at an interesting level of the S&P uh, here right now, right about this uh, 2940 point. Right, this is where we, uh, uh, you know, had some trouble getting back up, uh, you know, above here going throughout uh, August uh, here. So, kind of right at that point, seeing if this news is enough to propel us or, or reverse us back down, like it did, uh, you know, a couple of months back. Um, but aside from that, earnings next week, uh, you know, it'll be uh, uh, nice to uh, uh, get back in that uh, phase of things. Uh, you know, certainly plenty of financial names uh, kicking us off uh, here. J.P. Morgan. Bank of America, Wells Fargo through Tuesday and, and Wednesday. So uh, starting to keep my eye on there and, and you know, shift towards that uh, kind of individual uh, companies and, and um, you know, how they're, those are progressing uh, here for us as well. And we are progressing over to the Rock Lobster, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir. What is on your radar here for the rest of the week? Um, all the same stuff. Everybody's watching because uh, this is dominating the headlines. It's dominating the algos. It's dominating market news. So, uh, I'm looking for, we either going to have the big Donald photo op on Friday, you know, with the, the next episode of the, uh, of the, uh, the apprentice <laughs> or, uh, we're going to have sadness next week and gosh knows what's going to happen. So, um, I think that's, and then earnings, we start looking at earnings the following week. So I think that's, that's it. That's what we're waiting for. And it would not surprise me at all if the market is in exactly the same place that it was when this show ended today. Yep, pretty much. Uh, and this show is about to end right now. But if you if you need more, you need more in your lives, don't worry. We'll be back in exactly a half an hour or just hit the next button on your podcast device of choice. We'll be talking a lot of TWIFO. But before we do that, let's go back around the horn. The way we just came, let's start with the Rock Lobster. Sir, if folks are intrigued, maybe they want to check out a webinar or two, or maybe they want to check out this new silver class with the texting and stuff. Where do they go? What do they do? Yes, optionpit.com. We are trying to get more to a uh, sort of a newsletter style trade concept, helping people work through the idea, like come up, why, why the trade, why the idea, how do you manage it? More like a step by step thing for uh, new new pe people that are new to options. So the idea is to take you along 
on the ride. You can watch how the trade matures and explain it to you. And then you can use our our our, uh, our chat service. Ask us a question about it. Ask us a question about the exact trade. So um, so far, uh, it's going okay. And uh, you will see more of this kind of thing from from us in the future. Hint, hint. So there's a hint. I'm hinting you that will be more stuff because this is what people keep asking us for. So we're going to give it to them. There you go. Get the people what they want. Always a good business model, I find. Hey, maybe if you have a question out there like Quent or others, you want someone to help hold your hand in terms of how to do this stuff and execute and everything like that. Maybe you want to hit up, hit up the, the folks over there in the land of the pit and have them have them hold your hand through these very scary moments and explain how they work. And if you want someone to hold the hand of your portfolio, perhaps Uncle Mike is a fellow you should call. Uncle Mike, sir, what could someone like Quent or someone else get if they call up? What should they expect, sir? They should expect very honest uh, customer service from me. I will tell people what's what. Now, I will uh, be very blunt with them in a very honest, uh, open and secure and uh, polite way, of course. And uh, I'm not afraid to use the option product within your portfolio for long-term investments. I think it's a very vital thing that, uh, assuming that you match the right criteria, of course, but uh, I think it's very important to at least you, you look at the option of options. Feel free to contact me, stcharleswealth.com. There you go. Another little slogan for the business card. Look at the option of options with Uncle Mike. And on behalf of Uncle Mike and the Rock Lobster and the Last Dad of Krypton and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, subscribing, for listening live, or sending in such great questions. Keep them coming. And we'll see you back here in half an hour for Twifo. Otherwise, back here live tomorrow, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern for Volatility Views. Oh, they're... If Mr. Rock Lobster is correct, there's going to be a lot of volatility to talk about. And, of course, we're right back here at it again on Monday for more of The Option Block. The Option Block is brought to you by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com.